The Watchman. In the Bible, the prophets were often referred to as watchmen. They were called by God to be the guardians of the people, to warn them of impeding danger and to call them to repentance and faithfulness, symbolism of a watchman. In the Bible, watchmen were important figures who played a critical role in guarding towns and military installations from surprise attacks and other potential dangers. These watchmen were responsible for keeping a constant lookout for any signs of danger and for sounding the alarm if they saw anything that posed a threat to the safety of their community. Watchmen were responsible for the safety of their community and failure to fulfill their duties could have grave consequences. The Bible also refers to watchmen in a spiritual sense. God appointed prophets as spiritual watchmen over the souls of his people. Two prophets that refer to as watchmen in the Bible are Ezekiel and Isaiah. Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up thy voice. With the voice together they shall sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring Zion again, break forth into joy, sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arms in the eyes of all nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Today, we are going to look at warning from the watchmen and what we can learn from them. Isaiah 55, 6 through 7, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. My sermon today has three points. Number one, a warning. Number two, a crossroad of the conscience. And number three, a merciful God. Let us heed the warning of the watchman. Chapter one, the warning. Every person is responsible for their own personal relationship with Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and men. You have to seek the Lord as an individual. You cannot have your parents or pastor do this for you. On the day of judgment, our lives will not be reviewed collectively. You will stand there on your own. Therefore, we cannot depend on other people to seek the Lord on our behalf. You have to seek him. You have to come to know him. You have to accept the gift of salvation. This means that you must call upon the Lord and you must do this yourself. No one is going to be in heaven by association and no one is going to be in heaven by accident. Everyone will have made an intentional decision to seek the Lord themselves. So I ask you today, do you truly know God? Have you called out to him? Or are you depending on God's relationship with your wife or husband or parents? 
If this is you today, find time. Or better yet, make time with God and talk to him. This is one of the greatest warnings in the Bible. The prophet Isaiah told us, he told us this, he said, seek the Lord while he may be found. This is the words of one of the watchmen in the Bible. Seek the Lord while he may be found. We can conclude that this statement from Isaiah the prophet suggests that there will be a point in time, a point in human history where God will not be found. That is the warning for you today. Isaiah the prophet suggests that there will be a point in time, a point in human history where God will not be found. Now is the time to seek him. Now. Chapter 2. The Crossroad of the Conscience When people hear the gospel message, they meet a crossroad where they must make a decision to accept the gospel message or reject it. And allow me to highlight one of the reasons why people reject the gospel message. The reason is pride. As the prophet states, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. One of the elements required in seeking the Lord is admitting that you are a sinner who has offended a holy God. Unfortunately, Pride gets in the way for a lot of people. The reason being they do not see themselves as a sinner. They see themselves as a good person. Therefore, the gospel message offends because the gospel message points the finger at you and you and you and me that we are all sinners who deserve hell. Although people may reject the gospel message, at the core of each person, there is a desire and a yearning for God. They can deny it and suppress this yearning for him and live an unfulfilled life. But, but, but God has made it so that we all have a conscience, a conscience that is moved and pricked and disturbed when it hears the gospel message. Why is the human conscience disturbed when it hears the gospel message? Because it knows the gospel message is true. When people hear that there is a God who created the heavens and earth, their conscience tells them that this is true, that everything couldn't be here by accident. The world and all its complexities couldn't be formed by happenstance. When people hear that God created them, he formed them, that he designed them in his own image and that human beings are not animals and they are not a mishap of evolutionary process, their conscience tells them this is true. When people hear that the God who created this universe and the God who created humanity therefore expects his creations to love him and to obey the laws he has set in his universe, their conscience tells them this is true is true also but why do people fight with their conscience if they know this is true the answer is simple the gospel message reveals to us that we are all guilty who wants to hear that they are guilty that is why people suppress the gospel message because the gospel message points the finger at you 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 and me and tells us that we are all guilty and have fallen short of the laws of this infinite God who has set requirements for us that we haven't met. And their conscience tells them that all of this is true and that God requires we love one another because all humans are made in the image of God and are therefore special in the eyes of God. When people hear that God requires we love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and that the proof of this love is seen in John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. But people do not like what their conscience is telling them because they know they have not kept his commandments. They know they haven't kept 
his laws and that they are guilty and they have offended and disobeyed a God who is eternal, infinite, and holy. Therefore, they are guilty. But their conscience suppresses this truth. Because if the truth be told, who wants to know that an everlasting God is angry with them? Who wants to know that every one of their actions, thoughts, and deeds will one day be examined? Who wants to know that all their sins will be judged and the punishment for each of them are everlasting? Who wants to know that they will spend eternity in a lake of fire, therefore people reject the gospel message? But they ignore one important element that we should know, which is chapter 3, the merciful God. Let us take heed of the watchman, the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 55, 6-7, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Regardless of who you are, what you have done, God will have mercy on you and you will spend eternity with him.